in the exodus of Agamemnon, the palace doors open, and there stands Clytemnestra, covered in blood, beside the dead bodies of Agamemnon and Cassandra. Clytemnestra reveals she lied to suit her agenda. She's been angry with Agamemnon for years, claiming he faked his love. Having stabbed him three times, Clytemnestra feels triumphant and holds Agamemnon responsible for his own destruction. Clytemnestra defends her actions as a work of justice and notes the leader said nothing when Agamemnon sacrificed Iphigenia and that Agamemnon should have been banished and that she's prepared to fight the chorus. The outraged chorus leader says Clytemnestra will pay. Clytemnestra interrupts to point out she is protected by Aegisthus, her lover. And she darn well knows Agamemnon was unfaithful too. He seduced Troy's captive women, including Cassandra. The chorus mourns Agamemnon, blaming Helen, Clytemnestra, and the spirit of the house of Atreus for his death. Clytemnestra says Helen killed no one, but agrees the demon of this house bears the blame. The chorus replies, everyone is bound to fate, to Zeus's will, but the blame chiefly lies with Clytemnestra's treachery. Aegisthus enters, guarded by armed soldiers. The mood becomes tenser as the soldiers surround the chorus. Aegisthus is overjoyed at Agamemnon's death. Tracing this treachery back to former Argive king Atreus, Agamemnon's father, and Thyestes, Aegisthus's father. When Thyestes challenged Atreus's authority, Atreus exiled him, then welcomed him back. But the welcoming feast contained the flesh of Thyestes's own children. Unaware, Thyestes ate, and when he discovered what he had done, he called down a curse on the house of Atreus. Finally, Aegisthus says he has avenged his family. The chorus leader says Aegisthus will not go unpunished. Aegisthus claims he has power now and will enslave the chorus members. The chorus bitterly argues with Aegisthus, then hopes Orestes will return and kill Aegisthus and Clytemnestra. Aegisthus' soldiers raise their weapons. The chorus members raise their staves. Clytemnestra stands between them all to stop the escalating conflict. She says there's been enough bloodshed and tells the chorus to go home. The chorus leader and Aegisthus trade a few more insults. Clytemnestra pulls Aegisthus into the palace, saying they now control the royal house and will put everything in order. The chorus members walk off one by one in silence. Here in the Peripatia, the reversal of fortunes, Agamemnon, the conqueror, is now the conquered. Clytemnestra, the loyal wife, is now a murderer, another chain in the link of bloodshed. Clytemnestra is convinced of her righteousness and believes her husband was a sacrifice, as their daughter was to him. Aegisthus is now following in his father's footsteps, exiled and returned. Aegisthus is clever enough to wait until the end of the drama to appear, since his presence earlier would have aroused suspicion. Clytemnestra's villainous last line, will put things in order, shows a desire to return to the natural order of things, but returning to the past will be impossible.